What's poppin' dogs? Mr. Allen here talking domain and range of piecewise functions given their graphs in this video. And I feel like domain and range always seem so simple at first, but proves to be rather difficult. So for this first one here in red, we got stuff all over the place. I got a horizontal line, a portion of a quadratic maybe, a couple linear pieces. I mean, everything's going on here. Here's how I like to tackle domain and range. I take a marker, a pencil, whatever it may be, and I'm gonna move from left to right for my domain because we're talking about X values. And the question is like, is there anything that we need to eliminate? Because at first we're thinking all real numbers, right? It's everything, unless there's something I have to exclude. Okay, so that's the idea with domain and range. So over here, this graph goes far left. This goes all the way to negative infinity. And maybe you know what I'll do is I'll write a negative infinity here and a positive infinity there. So I know that it's all the way over here. Now, as I come across this graph, ooh, open circle, should I eliminate that? No, because it still exists down here. We got a closed circle on this little quadratic looking portion, right? So we're gonna keep including it. We're not taking that out. Keep going here. Uh oh, open circle, double open circle. So at one, two, three, negative three, I'm gonna have to exclude that value. So if we're gonna go in interval notation, I'm gonna go from negative infinity to negative three. Then we'll union something else in there, okay? So let's keep it going now. We'll do, we'll start up with negative three again, but then does it ever stop? Well, over here at zero, I've got open, but it's closed down here, so we're good. We're not excluding zero, and then it goes on forever. So here we go to infinity. Yay! Another way of writing this would be, uh, and I think usually they want you guys to do interval notation with these styles, because you, you tend to just like read it from left to right and start eliminating things. But another viable method or viable answer, let's say, would be x cannot equal negative three. That's the only value you were excluding, so that would be an acceptable answer unless they specifically state use interval notation. So just pay attention to the directions or whatever your teacher wants you to do. Both of these would give the same answer though, all right? How about range? Range, now we're doing the same process, we're just going up and down, okay? So if I'm looking up and down here, uh, how low does the graph get? Is there a lowest point? Yes. Okay, it's, it starts at negative three, right? So if I'm gonna list these things out, I'll do this one in, uh, I'll do it in blue. So we'll start at negative three and we're including that value of negative three, right? That's a point on that graph. It's a solid point. If this was open, you'd see parentheses here because both of those are open, okay? So we're working our way up. Now, do I need to exclude anything here as we go from negative three on up to positive infinity? Well. At this spot, it's open, but the graph still exists over here, so we're good. Then up here at negative one, my graph, it, it doesn't exist between these numbers. So we're gonna stop it at negative one, but we are going to include that value of negative one. So bracket that, and then union, when do I pick this thing back up again? Because for domain, we picked it right back up at negative three, right, it's just an open circle. But here I have a gap. I'm actually jumping up to positive two, but we are not, or sorry, we are not gonna include it here, but it would be included on this stretch of the graph here. So even though it's an open circle and an open circle, this graph, this is a horizontal line of like y equals two, we gotta include that because that's a value on this graph. It's going on forever over here, just doesn't exist right here. That's a tricky one. Man, who would have done that? I did. I didn't even mean to do that, but that, that's a good one right there because I'd imagine that could trip a lot of people up. They see the double open circles, they're like, oh, I'm not including it, they're both open, but really it's this horizontal stretch of the graph that says two does exist, okay? Because this right here, this graph, that's y equals two when x is less than negative four. Like that's how it'd be written as like part of a piecewise function, okay? All right, and then does it ever stop going up? No, it has arrows going up forever, so we're going to infinity and beyond. Lovely, all right? As far as like inequalities and things, let me see where I'm at on my screen here. I think I need to be, I'll jump it up right here. I'm gonna write the inequality version of this. Again, I prefer our uh, interval notations, but if you did want to do inequalities, you'd say negative three, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to negative one. And then I'd probably just put like a comma, and then we'll go y is greater than, or equal to two. So that's that's the equivalent when using inequalities. So whichever one your teacher likes, make sure you're using that one, okay? They'll be like, bro, Mr. Allen, after this, it's cool. Follow their directions, right? I'm not grading your papers. I'm not grading your papers. I got too many papers to grade already. So if your teacher is grading your papers, make sure you do the style that they want, whether it's inequalities or interval notation, or maybe they just don't care like me and just want you to use the one that's most efficient to you and makes sense to you. So to each their own. All right. Moving on, this one here. 
we got, looks like a stretch of a linear equation, perhaps. Oops, I touched it. And then uh, it looks like a quadratic over here. So domain and range, left to right, right? Left to right. So does, is there a farthest left that this graph goes or does it keep going like this one kept going? Well, it does stop. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, negative five. Am I including negative five? No, it's an open circle. There's nothing that exists here. So we're gonna go open negative five, right? So parentheses for not including the point. A lot of people are like, when I say, well, are you including it or not including it? They're like, I don't know what you mean. That's what we mean. Open circle, the point does not exist, parentheses, okay? Always ask those questions. If you have them, be like, I don't know what you mean by are we including the point? It might sound like simple or you might feel like it's a dumb question. Ask it. It's all good. It's a common question, okay? I had a student ask that the other day. They're like, hey, I don't know what that means. And I was like, thank you for being so honest. All right, moving on. Uh, and then we explained it and now we're all good. Goes to negative two here, looks like, and including that point, because it's a closed circle, and there's no graph existing again until zero. So basically we're gonna cut this thing off at negative two, include it, union, and then we're gonna start her up again, not including zero for my x values, right? This is zero for my x values. It's an open circle, so parentheses, zero. And then does it ever stop going to the right? No, it does not, it keeps going up. So it just keeps going up and to the right. So it's gonna to go to infinity and beyond. Yay, domain done. If you'd like the inequality form equivalent here, I shall show you. It'll be negative five and then it'll be less than x, less than or equal to negative two, comma, and then x is greater than zero. So those are the inequality versions of the uh, interval notation. I find interval notation here to be pretty clean. Um, again, your call, whatever your teacher's call is. Range, let's do it. Is there a lowest point that this graph gets, right? Because we're always going from the small numbers to the larger numbers, negatives to the positives. I am going to be at negative, looks like negative two here, on up. Okay, so let's start with negative two. We'll include it, because it's a point right there. It's the vertex, it looks like, of that quadratic. So bracket, negative two. Now, does it ever stop? Because there's like a gap here, right? But is there? Is there a gap? Because this graph just goes up. The, the y values exist everywhere, starting at negative two on up. So we're actually going to infinity. This is a quick one here for range. Beautiful, that's dope. Inequality version would be just y is greater than or equal to negative two. That's it, okay? It's so either one you wanna do, your call or your teacher's call, but you got your two versions there. I'm gonna provide you guys with both because that's just the kind of guy I am, right? I'm gonna show you interval notation, interval notation. I'm gonna show you the inequalities. I don't wanna go too fancy with the set builder, but it's basically what set builder is with all the fancy brackets. Anywho, that's it. Hope that helps you guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or request for other videos, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that YouTube stuff so I can make that money. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.